This isn't a budget question only. This isn't just a policy discussion. This is about real people's lives. And the further away you get from real people's lives, the easier it is to make the calculation, as some have made around here. Some members of Congress whose health care is made available to them because of the federal government. That's why they have health care, because of the federal government. Whether they're in the exchange or they have it some other way, most members of the United States Senate and House have that health care because of the federal government. So those with health care provided by the federal government seek relentlessly, too many seek relentlessly to use federal power to cut people off of health care. And so this is about real people's lives, not some abstraction, not some remote discussion about policy and about budgets and deficits and appropriations. This is about real people's lives, like Haley's little sister. And I know there's been a lot of discussion of late about Social Security and Medicare and how we hope that they're off the table. And that's good. Those two earned benefit programs being off the table. But there is a third program that is not an earned benefit. But I would argue that Medicaid, is, Medicaid tells us who we are as a nation. It it's, it's as if we look into a mirror when we consider the Medicaid program and we we, it tells us what kind of, of a nation we are or what kind of a nation we will be if we slash it the way that so many people around here have proposed in budget after budget, year after year, talking about slashing Medicaid arbitrarily, arbitrarily and outrageously and obnoxiously. And we're going to stop them from doing that once again. But I think it's important to remind people what we're talking about here. Medicaid is a program basically about three Americans. Children from low-income families, and not just in urban communities, but there's certainly a high number of children in our, in our cities that benefit from Medicaid. And thank God we have the Medicaid program all these decades later. Good evening, friends. I have a new update for Social Security recipients. Several Republican lawmakers are now pushing for several changes to be made to Social Security benefits. Payments worth as much as $1,400 are going to be deposited on March 31st for millions of Americans. My friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, in three days, I will be announcing two more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, simply click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. As he mulls a 2024 presidential bid, today former Vice President Mike Pence called for a common sense and compassionate solution to reform entitlement programs and the nation's debt burden. Mike Pence is suggesting changes to Medicare and Social Security programs that are hurling towards insolvency especially for younger generations. During his speech, Mike Pence stated, what we need now is leadership because we can introduce common sense reforms that will never touch anyone who is in retirement or anyone who will retire in the next 25 years. It'll just take courage to do it. What to do with Social Security and Medicare as both of the programs close in on projected insolvency dates has emerged as a dividing line for Republicans seeking to lead their party in the 2024 presidential contest. Forecasters say Social Security will not be able to pay out its promised benefits in about 12 years, and Medicare will not be able to do so in just five years. Economists say both programs will drive the national debt higher in the decades to come forcing teeth-gritting choices for the next generation of lawmakers. Mike Pence's ideas are broadly in line with former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, 
who last week opened the door to potential cuts for younger generations. During a campaign rally, Governor Haley said that while she wouldn't touch the benefits of older people who retired with certain guarantees of a financial future, the rules have changed for anyone new coming in the system. Many leading Republicans have recently sought to signal their unwillingness to touch entitlement programs, though the GOP has a long history of threatening to slash the benefits. Democrats have pointed to a plan by Republican Senator Rick Scott of Florida that was introduced last year but later amended. It called for all federal spending legislation to sense it in five years, subject to votes in Congress that could preserve programs. So dear friends, what do you think will happen to Social Security and Medicare in the next five to 10 years? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The Social Security Administration sent out payments to nearly 71 million Americans in February 2023. Due to the monumental nature of issuing so many payments, the agency spreads out when they are sent depending on date of birth, type of benefit, and when a recipient first signed up for Social Security. This creates a situation where every so often, certain beneficiaries receive more than one payment in a calendar month. March will be one of those months, along with June, September, and December of 2023. Another group of beneficiaries always gets double payments as they receive both Social Security and Supplemental Security income. Those who receive both Social Security and Supplemental Security income receive two payments every month. The agency issues one on the first of the month for the supplemental support income. The agency issues one for the first of the month for the supplemental security income and a second one on the third of the month for Social Security. However, should the first of the month fall on a Saturday, Sunday, or a federal holiday, the payment date is moved forward to the earliest business day. This is a case in April when the first falls on a Saturday, so the payment has to be moved to the Friday before, which is March 31st, 2023. So for those who receive supplemental security income, they will get a double payment in March. Those beneficiaries who also receive social security payments will see three payments issued to them this month. The Social Security Administration pays benefits to retired and disabled workers, as well as their survivors. The amount that each beneficiary receives depends on several factors, including when the worker began claiming Social Security and what their primary insurance amount, among others. The average monthly Social Security payment in January 2023 was $1,961 across all types of benefits, and this is according to the agency data. Supplemental security income is specifically targeted at adults and children with disabilities and who have income and resources below certain thresholds. As of January 2023, the average payment was $677 across all beneficiaries of supplemental security income. The maximum amount was increased in 2023 to $914 for individuals and $1,371 for couples. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Tuesday. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. In just three days, I will be announcing two more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.